Well, I'm smiling because if what we just heard in the gospel is happening today, then the reign of God is among us. <laughs> no, that was just a joke. <laughs> uh, a father against his son and a mother against a daughter. And uh, No, but I think uh, when we look at today's readings, the first reading of Paul to the Ephesians where he talks about God's goodness in us uh, and how Christ has accomplished that in, in our lives, uh, in our world, and then the gospel is kind of a, uh, a contrary kind of version of what Paul speaks uh, in our first reading, kind of juxtaposed in a, in a way. And uh, we probably are thinking, well, how do we reconcile both these notions, you know, what Paul is talking in his first reading and what Jesus is speaking in, in the gospel today? And I think uh, when we take anything out of context, when it comes to scripture, you take anything out of context, uh, then it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but you put everything in context, then it makes perfect sense. And when Jesus talks uh, about, you know, that he has not come to establish peace, rather division, uh, or how I wish uh, it will, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing, what is Jesus talking about? I think we need to put these words of Jesus in the whole context of his mission. Jesus came to establish the reign of God uh, in his own times, and that continues in our own times as well. And what does the reign of God consist? If you look at the historical Jesus uh, way back, he was not the only person who, you know, people thought, or whom he claimed to be the Messiah. There were other people as well, but what was, uh, what, what was uh, special about Jesus uh, was that he came to proclaim the reign of God. And the reign of God simply meant that if you're following Jesus and his teaching, you cannot be the same person if you respond with a yes to Jesus and his teachings and his mission, his discipleship, you cannot be the same person. You are invited to make radical choices day in and day out. All of us are invited to make those radical choices. Sometimes those radical choices can cause tensions in our lives, in our own personal lives, in our relationships, in our families, uh, at our workplace, in our world. That's discipleship that we are called to. Sometimes we are called to make uh, those choices. Uh, if we are true followers of Jesus, uh, that doesn't mean we intentionally make choices so as to cause those divisions that Jesus is talking about. But sometimes there can be tensions, there can be you know, arguments, there can be you know, challenges in our life when we tend to make those uh, life-giving choices for ourselves, for other people in our lives, for our world. And those can be very radical choices around peace, around justice, around common good. Uh, all those things that Jesus brought to us in his teaching. And so when we consider this teaching of Jesus and his invitation, very challenging invitation this morning, in the context of his whole mission, that he came to establish the reign of God in his own time and it continues even to this day. It makes sense. <laughs> uh, it makes sense. Uh, but I think we also are equipped, as St. Paul writes to the Ephesians in our first reading, we are also equipped. We are strengthened with power through his spirit, as he writes, in the inner self, and that Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, that we are rooted and grounded in love. Uh, and he prays for us just as he prays for the fishes, that we may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that we all may be filled with the fullness of God. Uh, today we celebrate, remember, St. Paul of the Cross, uh, and he made certain choices in his life, even as a young person, very radical choices. St. Paul, uh, Paul Daniel, as he was known, was born in Ovada in 1694, in, in 
in today's Italy, the Republic of Genoa back then. And as a very young man, he saw a lot of suffering uh, around him. And his mother played a very important role in his life. Whenever he complained, like all of us, <laughs> as a child about all the sufferings that is uh, present around him and even in his family, the deaths that were happening in his family, uh, his mother always pointed him to the crucifix, uh, the passion and death of Jesus on the cross. Uh, and she said to him, your sufferings, our sufferings are nothing compared to that person on the cross and what he did for us. And St. Paul, as a child, was attracted to that, uh, was attracted to that. And as a young man, he began to discern what God's will for him is in his life. And so after much discernment, uh, he began his life that God was calling him to in 1720 when he was robed by uh, his bishop in the Passionist habit and that's what we, we take as the birth of our congregation back in 1720 uh, when he began his retreat and wrote the rule for his congregation. Uh, his focus, his mission was to proclaim, to proclaim the passion and death of Jesus in people's lives, not so much as uh, a negative, but as, uh, as a symbol, a powerful symbol of God's love for all of us. And he preached that through his life. Uh, he invited his companions to preach the same. And we do that even to this day, uh, to keep alive the memory of the passion, because the passion of Jesus continues to be present in our world, in our lives, in so many different ways, at so many different levels. Uh, but even from that, we are called to make choices. <laughs> even in our suffering, even in our challenges, even in our struggles, even in our brokenness, we are called to make life-giving choices, called to make radical choices. So today as we hear this verse of the gospel that challenges, remind us uh, of who we are as disciples of Christ, we ask God to bless us uh, with wisdom. First of all, to know what his will is in our life, and also ask God to give us the courage and strength to make those life-giving choices for us and for ourselves and for all those people in our lives. We ask for God's grace through this Eucharist.